Last night on MasterChef Australia. Today will be a battle royale. Jonathan cooked off against world-renowned chef Justin North in a celebrity challenge. They don't come much bigger than this. And gained the experience of a lifetime. I've just cooked next to Justin North. I'm buzzing. Tonight, two teams go head-to-head -to, -head to serve up a classic French menu. Your mission, to deliver by noon today. It's double the pressure as each team cooks alongside two legends of French cuisine, Tony Bilson and Michel Roux. Let's light up the stove. How much more French can you get? I thought it was a disaster. Judging them, two of the most revered names in the culinary world, Guillaume Brahimi and Tetsuya. We are completely stuffed. Jonathan has just faced off against Justin North in the Celebrity Chef Challenge. We think, fantastic, day's over. <laughs> no. <laughs> Gary says, there's more. There's one more thing we have to do today before you go, and that's to pick your teams for the team challenge tomorrow. Jonathan, one of your other rewards for winning the invention test this week is that you are a team captain. Your first task as team captain is to nominate what colour apron you'd like to have. I'm going to take blue. Thanks, mate. Congratulations. <laughs> Jonathan, who will be your opposing captain? Um, I'm going to pick Daniel. <laughs> Jonathan picks Daniel as the opposing team leader, and I think we're all really puzzled. I think he's actually a really strong cook. So we have our captains. Now we need to pick the teams. Jonathan will pick the first team member for the blue team. Daniel will pick the first team member for the red team. Then those two team members will each pick the next member of their own team. It's like a team pick relay. You pass the power of who's going to join your team next to the person you pick. Now the team picking's out of my hands. I'm not happy. There's nothing I can do, so let's see what mixed bunch of people I get now. Jonathan, who do you choose? I'm going to pick Fiona. Daniel, who would you like to pick for the red team? The first person I'll pick is Peter. Yeah. Fiona, who do you pick to join the blue team? Uh, pick Matthew. Marion? Thank you, Dave. Where? Adam. I pick Callum. <laughs> Courtney. Jimmy. Alvin. Thanks, Court. Jimmy, who's the next blue team member? Um, I'm going to pick Philip. I'd like to work with Sky. Pick Joe. Shani. I'd love for Carrie to join us. Well, Shani, two very solid cooks left to choose from. Aaron or Jake? Who do you choose for the red team? I choose Jake. Oh. <laughs> Aaron, that means you are the last piece that completes the blue team jigsaw. Thank you. I don't know why I was chosen last, but stuff them all. May your souffles not rise, may your sugar turn to salt in your desserts. Stuff them, you know, every single one of them. So the teams have been picked. 
you won't find out what the team challenge is until tomorrow. Good night, guys. We don't know what the challenge is going to be, but I'm looking at Daniel, I'm looking at my team, and I'm thinking, it doesn't matter what they throw at us, we can do it. We're all a bit nervous. We always are before a team challenge. But you just got to get mentally prepared for, you know, what the day's going to bring. All right, guys, really, we've got to win this, OK? Putting on the coloured aprons in the house definitely does send a big divide through everybody. And team challenge time does put a bit of a competitive feeling in the house. All of a sudden, there's a ring at the doorbell. So Joe and I run upstairs, and we're opening the door, and there's two boxes on the ground, a red box and a blue box. And so it's like the clock starts. Guys, package, package. Oh. When we open up the box, inside we find a letter, all in French, and also a French dictionary. Uh, great, French. We can read French. Hey. Lucky for us, Claire speaks fluent French, which is a real advantage at this point. So the challenge today has a French theme, and our task is to prepare a French meal comprised of three plates. C-H-O-I-S-I-R. At this stage, it's, we, we can't immediately tell what it is because our French is pretty sketchy. Oh, is it? Okay, yes, maybe. Shock. Pour la cuisine française. So each team has to choose their recipes from a cookbook. In the house, we will find two books. Um, the, a book of... You, a uh, cookbook. Livre de cuisine is a, a cookbook, isn't it? It will be identifiable by a little MasterChef symbol stuck on the inside of the cover. Choose one and choose recipes only from that book. Let's go, 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 go. We're all running around looking for the books. We're just running around like crazy kids looking for lollies, you know, in a treasure hunt. We're working through deciphering the French letter. We still don't know what we're meant to be looking for. And some members of the red team have started running around. I mean, it's chaos in here. It's absolutely chaotic. Are we definitely sure we should be running around the house like lunatics? This is what the thing means? Uh, we're not just copying the blue team? That's a good point. Once I found the first book by Michelle Rue, I had a fair idea of what I was looking for. I'm thinking, right, they've got to be in those books somewhere. Matt's hot on my tails. He grabs a book, flicks it open, then quickly runs out the door, and I just think, I've missed it. By, like, four seconds, I've missed the book. You guys only need one book? No. Um, we're still working it out. We're just working through which book we need. Sorry. So we've got both cookbooks, and the red team have none. There's only two books. They've got one, we've got to get the other one. Whenever they're ready to give us one. So our strategy is, you know, stick the knife in a bit. So we're just going to take our time, come up with the three best dishes out of one cookbook and give them the scraps. We had a flick through both of the books and we decided to go with the Tony Belson book. Within five minutes, we fixed our menu. We knew what we wanted. All right, let's go. Okay, so far. Jonathan, do you just want to flip you want to consider it? No, 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 no. I think I think we've got to be decisive. Let's Jimmy go. finally handed over their second cookbook, and they had given us the Michelle Rue book, and so we quickly ran upstairs to share it with the rest of the group. Okay, guys, what are we going to do for me? So now we're good to go. The letter told us that we need to head to the International College of Management in Manly, which specialises in hospitality management. Oh, all right. We've made our final decisions, picked the menu, everyone knows where they're going to be working and what they have to do, and we're off to go. Let's go. We hope that what we have is good enough, but more importantly, we hope that, you know, we can catch up to the blue team. Manly, the weather just deteriorates and it starts raining. It's a, this massive old building. It's absolutely stunning. The fact that we're going to be cooking in there today, I, I can't wait to get in there. 
Kiri, ne! Blue team, welcome to the International College of Management on a glorious Sydney day. <laughs> you're the first to arrive. That means you'll get a 15-minute head start over the red team. Today, you'll be cooking a three-course meal of classic French cuisine. That menu must be ready by noon today. The winning team will be whisked to one of my favourite Sydney restaurants, not only for lunch, but also some priceless experience in the kitchen with one of the most exciting chefs in Australia. Lose, however, and waiting for you is the terror of an elimination round. Tomorrow, all the members of that losing team will go into the elimination. It's a bit nerve-wracking because you have to kind of be aware of what your teammates are doing around you more than what you're doing yourself, because at the end of the day, one bad dish, more are going to cop it. Before you head in to start cooking, there's one more thing. Each team will be given a mentor. He's run great restaurants in Australia for 40 years. He's known as the godfather of the Sydney restaurant scene. Please welcome Tony Bilson. I've been cooking for over 40 years. My cooking style is, is French, but it's very much Australian. I often say that we, that we create memories, and I try to create an experience for people that they're going to live with for the rest of their life, and that makes their life a bit, a bit more beautiful. Welcome, Tony. I think you can tell by the looks on the blue team's faces <laughs> that they are a little bit stoked to have you here. Thank you so much. It's Tony Bilson, the guy who actually wrote the book that we're cooking from, and he's going to mentor us in the kitchen. So I'm pumped by that. I think that that's fantastic. What do you think you can do to help the blue team win today? Well, the book itself is designed for home cooks, and I think what I can do is to help them put a professional touch to it. We're here to win, guys. We're not yeah. here to muck around. <laughs> I'm in shock. I'm in awe. This man is a legend of French cuisine in Australia. Oh, we've got a great advantage in this challenge. Mr. Bilson is waiting. The kitchen is waiting. What are you waiting for? Get in there and start cooking. Let's go, guys. We've got a 15-minute head start on the red team. We've also got an extra person, so we've, we're all feeling pretty chipper about the challenge and really keen to just get, get cooking. What have we chosen for today? Starting with the roasted lobster with a herb butter sauce. Then we're going with the duck with yep. figs yeah. and orange. We're going to serve that with some parmesan, yep. and then we're going to serve creme brulee with a twist of the puff pastry. Instead of the prunes, we're thinking the same stock syrup, but using maybe some peaches. Fantastic. So well, that's great. That's Tony great. thinks the menu's great. It's a very classic French menu. We pull into the driveway and we run straight into the building. Oh, wow. <laughs> and as we're standing out the front, there's Matt standing there in all his glory in a tuxedo. It's, uh, it's a pretty imposing sight. Red team, welcome. Given the importance of this challenge, we're going to give you a mentor. Please welcome from the Waterside Inn in Bray, outside London, the man himself. Michelle Rue. <laughs> I've been cooking now for 50 years. My philosophy on cooking is simplicity, and I want the product to talk to me. So the main ingredient must explode in your mouth. Michelle, welcome, and thank you so much for taking part and agreeing to mentor the Red Team. I just can't explain how excited I am about seeing him. It's just... it's just amazing. What do you think a great French meal offers the diner? Sophistication, but in all simplicity. And uh, 
with the best ingredient. <laughs> Red team, please leave Michelle Rue and head to the kitchens. Okay, let's go, guys. Come on, guys, let's go. Woohoo! We're in the kitchen now with Chef Michel Roux. Uh, he's asking us what our menu is, and of course our menu comes directly from his book. The entree we've planned is the poached oysters yes. with mayonnaise and horseradish. Now we had planned to serve the cucumber coolie with that particular dish. Uh, the main we've got is the, the pigeon canoes with the grape jus and the cabbage. And for dessert we've chosen to do some poached white peaches with a pistachio creme anglaise. Super. Yep. Now, come to the canoe at pigeon. I'm not going to say don't do that dish, it's up to you. You decide, guy. You're cooking. But my opinion there is I would think a dish like, for example, the lightly smock duck would be a very good dish. Michelle lets us know that we should probably change the pigeon dish to a duck dish which is seasonally going to work better. However, the duck dish has really strong Asian influences. How do you feel about it? I think Are you we should do it. Yeah. I think we should yeah. do it. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So you're there is no it. way that you can argue with Michelle Roux in a kitchen. It's like turning up ringside to tell Muhammad Ali how to box. You just cannot do it. All right, guys, let's light up the stove. All right, oh, let's go, guys. Hey, Come on. Hey, All righty, hey. beauty. Today I'm looking after the main course, which is the duck dish. I've got Callum next to me. He's looking after the potatoes. And I've got left of me, I've got Claire. She's doing the glaze and the sauce. But my job is to actually debone the duck. Oh, my God. I've never debreasted a duck before. Just keep it angled against the bone. Okay, so against. No, no, okay. just, yeah, just use the point. Okay, take the fillet off. Just run the, just sort of run the knife along. Oh, yeah, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, perfect, actually. Just for the entree, Aaron and I are cooking roasted lobster with the herb butter. We put the herb butter into the lobster through a cavity that we make in its head. It takes some time to get that butter into the head. Keep on going. Okay, keep on going. A little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. You've really kind of got to force the stuff in. Keep it going. Yeah, we're done. When it comes to cooking a lobster, there's just a razor thin line between it being overcooked, undercooked, and just right. And I'm terrified. If that lobster isn't perfect, then, you know, it's game over. I'll be working on desserts with Joanne and Phil, and we'll be making creme brulee with some poached peaches and some pastry. So I need to get the custard made so that it has time to set. If I don't set, don't have a classic creme brulee dessert. You just don't. Once I get the peaches cut, I want to measure the liquid and the ingredients out for my poaching syrup that the peaches are going to sit in. And just let it simmer for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then put them on the skin and then just leave them to cook gently on the skin. We're, do we're doing well, but we've just got to focus and less talk, OK? I'm responsible for the main course, which is the brand new smoked duck breast and stir-fried vegetable dish. I'm doing it with Peter and Adam, and I start cutting off the duck breast. It's only the breast that we really need, but it's got to be a neat job. This is the star of, of the dish. We also need to prepare the vegetables for our stir fry. This is going to be the most elegant stir fry any of us has ever prepared in our lives. But because it doesn't immediately sound French to us, we're worried that it's something the judges may not identify as being within the spirit of the challenge. Okay. Okay. The dessert Sky and I are making today are poached white peaches with a pistachio creme anglaise. Um, I'm in charge of the creme anglaise which is basically a custard. How finely should I be grinding them right to a Well, as a, as a puree almost, so okay. in the pestle, as thin as you can. Yeah. Okay. I take the pistachios and start to ground them into a paste. Michelle recommends that I use a pestle and mortar and do it in batches. I'm going to be taking care of poaching the peaches, and it's really about making sure that you don't use too much rosemary because the flavour of the peach is quite subtle, so it's about getting that balance of flavours there. Cut it, cut it straight. Oh, cut it straight? That's it. I finished making the custard for the creme brulee dessert. 
One of the tricky bits is to ensure that the molds are put in the freezer long enough to give the brulees time to set. If they don't set, it's going to ruin the whole dessert. I'm working on the butter puff and uh, poaching the peaches with Philip. First, I roll out the butter puff. It's very finicky and um, it's, it's very time consuming, so it, it's not as easy as it looks. The next stage is to put them in the oven. Joe, come on, get, are you going to get that in the oven? I can't because the ovens are all on low. One oven was on low. I, I, I... There's a 200 run on the There's two on 200, Joe. Okay. I'm angry at how long Joe's taking to get this pastry in the oven. It's a 15 minute job. I think it's taking nearly 45 minutes. I'm furious. It's 210. Ah, that's okay. Just whack it in. So then just turn it down, okay? Okay. In addition to that, Phil got the peaches ready, put them on the stove, let Joe know, and they sat there and got overcooked. Oh, no, they're too soft. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Shit. I need to get another right. one in. Let's just, it's, yeah. like, it's doable. Let's yep, just do I can it. do it. And we had to recook those peaches. Behind you, behind you. Less than one hour to go, yeah? That means you need to put up your beautiful three-course French-themed dish. Not only to make Tony Bilson proud, but, of course, the special guests that will be arriving very shortly to taste your food. Red team, we've got two very special guests on the judging panel that you haven't met that are absolute experts in French cuisine. So get stuck in. Come on, guys. What else can they throw at us today? We've got Michelle Roux, we've got Tony Bilson. Who on earth could they get to judge our dishes? Me and Jake, we are working on the poached oyster dish, which is the entree. I've got my mayonnaise finished and I'm happy with it. It's time to move on to the oysters. Um, we've got to get these babies opened, uh, which could take a little bit of time. I'm responsible for the cucumber coulis. The pressure points for that is getting the consistency right uh, and getting the flavours just right because it should just be quite refreshing. Should I add more lemon? A little, but not too much, right? Not too much. Can we interrupt yeah, you for I a second? Yeah. Let's talk about what these guys are doing. Yeah. So I, I hear they're cooking duck as uh, the main course. Yes. Now they weren't, were they? They well, were doing something uh, I mean, else. They were doing pigeon. Yeah. The, the duck in France is one of the most popular dish with pigeon. In fact, more popular than pigeon. Yeah. More classic than pigeon. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now so, what about, are they scared of the Asian flavours, do you think? No, I don't think so. I think they will do well. OK, well, yeah. we'll keep our fingers yeah. crossed. Yeah. Red team, we've got 45 to go. We're looking good. We want that really smoking in the next five, ten minutes, huh? OK, good. After okay. I've marinated the duck, I need to get it in the wok, which Peter has set up. The smoking of the duck is the most crucial part of this dish. If that duck is overcooked, we are completely stuffed. That's just gone in, Chef. Ah, good. Excellent. Good? They're nice yeah, and perfect. perfect, I think. Right, guys, I need your attention just for a second. I know you're busy. You've got under half an hour. Don't be complacent. Right, one more thing. Little surprise for you. Bottle of cuvee riche from Chandon. You have to do an extra dish for the judging panel. So you're now going to be cooking four dishes. And you have to use the cuvee riche, this method champenoise, in that dish. Get your thinking caps on, have a huggle, work it out quickly, cos you ain't got much time. Let's go. 30 minutes to go. We haven't played it. We've got to make an extra dish. Who's going to do that? And how are we going to come up with this thing? do with it, but I've got an idea. The uh, strawberry mousse and champagne serve separate where they have been cooked in. Michelle Roux mentions that we can use the poached strawberries and make a, a strawberry mousse and a poached strawberry cocktail for the fourth course. Everyone's cooking at this stage, so it's fairly obvious that I'm going to have to do this fourth dish. So cut them in pieces, huh? Oh, OK. And they will push quicker. Come on, guys, let's go. Let's do it. I've got something to tell you guys. You need to cook a fourth course. 
We were going to finish this challenge with 15 minutes spare. Now we've got to produce another dish. I'm not happy. If we wanted to do something like a pre-dessert, this I noticed there's some cherry tomatoes in there. Okay. And just make like a little puff pastry pizza, and then do a little sabé on with the. Great. Let's do that. I've taken charge of the fourth dish. And we've decided to do a fine tart of tomatoes with a sparkling wine sabé on the top. I'm going to be making a sabé on with the champagne that George just given us. I'm just getting the basis for the fine tart for the fourth course. And the champagne. Chef, how are you? George, are you worried about anything? Uh, really, I'm just concerned with the plating. Things need to be beautifully cut. Yeah. That's when it's beautifully cut, it brings out the, the beauty of it. Now, if they haven't got the knife skills, and it looks like, as though it's been chopped, you know, up for a Sunday yeah. lunch or something, yeah. it can look pretty disastrous. Yeah. Well, Thank you, Chef. OK, uh, thanks very much. So, how's the creme brulee going? Just come out of the blast chiller. They're in the freezer. Yeah, OK. Sure. And they're looking good in the... OK, great. Make this all look beautiful and neat. They're in there for... How long have they been in there? I take the duck up from under the grill and I show Tony. Huh? Tony? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no! Oh, well, I didn't tell you to put them in. Oh, I hope they're not overcooked. Okay. They may be. I've left it in there too long. The look on his face is priceless. It's probably the worst expression I've ever experienced in my life. Oh. Oh. Well, let's hope it's OK. Guys, you've got five minutes to go, yeah? This is the time that counts. Putting the food on the plate must be gorgeous. Come on, blue team, let's go. I take the creme brulees out of the freezer. I look down and I notice that it hasn't set where it needs to. There's nothing more I can do at this point. I have to finish them. Just get them on. Just get them on. I haven't even sliced the duck breast yet. I'm too scared to. I'm worried to have a look inside. I've been letting it rest. Put it on the bench. I start slicing it. I yell out, Tony, Tony, have a look. What do you think? Uh, Tony, that's the duck, Dave. That's, that's perfect. It's perfect? OK. Cooked to perfection. After we've smoked the duck, um, we just basically, we need to plate up. Peter cuts through the duck, and this Duck breast is just beautifully pink from the top right through to the bottom. The only thing I'm really worried about is it a classic French dish. Final countdown, guys. You've got two minutes before your menu must be presented. Come on. Last little bit of energy. Let's go, red team. We're a little bit frantic at this stage, and we're just hoping we can get all of our dishes on the plates and to the judges. OK. Here, here, here. Pour that like that. That's it. Whisk. We've got one minute to go, and we're still trying to get this mousse finished. Go for it, go for it. Stop that. Guys, you're running out of time. You need to go, go, go. Four five raspberry on it. Let's do this. Come on, guys. Let's go, let's go. Perfect plates. We want clean plates. Guys, come on. This judging panel, can I tell you, they shake my boots a little bit. Yeah, that's it. You've got 10 seconds to go. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Put your tools down. Well Step away from your beaches. Well done, guys. Finally, the time's up. I'm really happy. And the dishes look exactly how I imagined them to be. Well done. Yeah. High fives, hoorays, this was awesome. Oh, oh I just feel wonderful. God. It's the most amazing feeling to have cooked with Michelle Roux, to pulled off the dishes, and to actually be happy with them. So thank you, Michelle. Pleasure. It's an absolute pleasure. Yeah. I leave you we guys. wish you luck. Thank I don't have to wish you luck anymore. Yeah. <laughs> You've done it. Thank, thank you. you. It's time to say goodbye to Michel Roux. He's really happy with what we've done, and he's so encouraging. We're sad to see him go. He's such a nice fella, and it's Michel Roux. Tony Bilson, thank you so much. It was an honour. Thank you, thank George. You. Even though Tony Bilson is not actually on the judging panel, we're pretty sure that these guests are going to be up there. It's like everything needs to be perfect. Well, we've been telling you all day there's going to be two special guests judging your food. Tasting your food.
They're experts in their fields. They're probably, in terms of stratospheric, two of our top chefs in this country. I can now reveal the first judge is Chef Guillaume Brahimi. Oh. Oh. And finally, I can reveal judge number two. Tetsuya. Oh. I thought I was floored when Michelle Rue was going to be our mentor. Now we're going to be feeding Tetsuya and Guillaume. This is just mind-blowing. It's time for the tasting and Red Team is up first. I am really, really nervous, that's for sure. We walk in for the tasting and it's a beautiful looking dining room and in front of us there's Matt Preston, Tetsuya Wakuda and Guillaume Barani. This is really, really intimidating. Red Team, welcome. I'd like to introduce you to my two special guest judges today. We're very honoured to have with us Tetsuya Wakuda from Tetsuya's. Um, who I suppose is Australia's best-known chef around the world. What you may not know is that the first five years of Tetsuya's training, he specialised in French food. And Guillaume Brahimi, who's Guillaume restaurant Benelong, and also Bistro Gourmet in Melbourne, to iconic French restaurants. I feel nervous sitting next to these two guys, so let alone how you must feel presenting your food for them. Really, we couldn't have found two better chefs to cast a critical eye over what you put up today. To have the chance to put a dish that you've made in front of somebody who's cooking that you've idolised for so long, it, it's a very emotional feeling. Daniel, the moment has come. We're going to taste. What's your first course and who is responsible for preparing it? Well, the first course to start with is a little uh, mousse bouche, which Elvin's prepared. It's a cucumber coolie. And the second part of our entree is uh, poached oysters with uh, mayonnaise and horseradish, which Jake and Courtney have prepared for you. Gentlemen, should we taste? Yeah. There's a little bit of a bitterness into it, yeah. so I didn't finish it, but I, I think there might be a touch too much lemon maybe in it. I am worried that the comments are not great about my coolie. I might have let my team down. Do you enjoy that dish? Very much, very, very much. You know, all the sauces uh, doesn't overkill the, uh, you know, uh, oysters. Nice contrast with texture mm. as well. Mm. It's a wonderful oysters. Nice dish. That's one of my proudest moments ever cooking for anyone. I know that I can cut it now. That's icing on the cake for me. a smoked duck breast with stir-fried vegetables. As a dish, duck, perfect cooked. And very, very, very tender. I love that combination of the smoke. I love that little sweet capsicum on the top. So I can see this is a classic Michel Roux dish. The question is whether it's a classic French dish. This is not the sort of duck we will cook in a French restaurant. I find that very not French. 
Guillaume tells us that he doesn't think the duck is a very French dish, and this is our worst fears realised. This is something that could put us all into an elimination challenge. The surprise dish is the dish we're going to serve next, and it's our Chandon strawberry mousse with a Chandon strawberry cocktail. Daniel, you seem quite nervous. Who's responsible for the dish? Yeah, me. Wonderfully smooth mousse. For me, a little bit lacking in strawberry flavour. But I love that. I would be happy just with that approaching liquor. <laughs> Sky and I's dessert will be the last dish to be tasted. I definitely am feeling the pressure. Our final dish is a, a poached white peach with pistachio creme anglaise. And Sky and Shani have made this little wonder for you. Uh, the white peaches are fantastic. They is perfectly poached. Pistachio anglaise. It's too coarse. It should be like silk. Texture is very important part of the taste as well. Almost 50 or 60 percent. They're really not happy with the creme anglaise. The texture is definitely a big thing for them. I feel like I've let the team down. Well, thank you, Red Team. You've given us a lot to think about and discuss. We'll now taste the blue dishes. You may leave us. We've done everything that we can do. We cooked our hearts out. We put up a menu that we're really happy with. All we can hope now is that we've done better than the blue team. It's time for us to present our four course classic French meal to Matt Tetsuya and Guillaume. From the moment those waiters walked through the door, time just went so slowly. If that lobster isn't perfect, then, you know, it's game over. Who cooked the lobster? Um, it was a joint, joint effort between Matthew and I. Magnifique. <laughs> I'm lost for words and I couldn't be prouder of the people I cooked with or myself. It's cooked perfect. I can't say more, really. Just... We've had a great first course. The waiters bring in the main course, which is the duck breast. Maybe it's been in the oven a bit too long, but I believe it's cooked right. Duck. Beauty cooked, and duck has a really nice flavour. I think you agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love it. I could sit there and have a pile of that pomana with that wonderful, wonderful jus over the top. You know, like this is French cuisine. Ça c'est français. I can't believe the day we're having. It's just unbelievable. It's nerve-wracking standing in front of Tetsu and Guillaume. I'm just not sure if they had a savvy on what's the right thing to do before the dessert we've got coming. The 
this course is just to clean your palate to be ready for the next. And this is so sweet. It's going to be very hard to follow with another sweet dessert. It's a bit of a sweet sledgehammer. There was no general disappointment on the Savion. I hope we haven't lost the challenge because of it. It's time for our dessert. I was working with Joanne and Philip, and I'm anxious, and I'm hoping that the creme brulees have set. Who's responsible for this dish? Carrie, Phil, and Joe. I didn't make the brulee. When Joanne put her hand up and said, I didn't do the creme brulee in front of the judges, every single one of our team members was just horrified. I was responsible for the brulee and getting it set. We go into these challenges as a team, and it's a bit of a, bit of a slap in the face for a team member to do that. There's obviously a, a problem with the setting of the brulee. I think I may have put a little bit too much mixture in for the time that we had to get it set. This throws the whole dish out of, out of whack, and I'm upset about that, because those peaches are beautifully, beautifully poached, and I like this little, this little kind of crispy bit of puff. Yeah, a bit upset, to be honest. Already also creme brulee, it's uh, too sweet. I think this dish could have potentially lost us the challenge. There'll be a lot of devastated people if it has, because I think we worked really well as a team. Well, Blue Team, we've tasted all your dishes, we've tasted all the Red Team's dishes. It's left us with a lot to think about. We have a hard decision to make. Remember, all of the losing team will be up for elimination tomorrow. Blue Team, you can leave us now. As we come out of the judging room, obviously there's an element that we're all thinking, oh God, you know, are we going home on the back foot of this? Yesterday, each team had to create a French banquet for a panel of expert judges with the help of two mentors. Today, we're going to find out who's won. Red and blue teams, welcome back to the MasterChef kitchen. What an amazing experience you guys have just had. You've cooked in the same kitchens as two of the greatest chefs on this planet. And the judging panel, again, you think of that. These guys are the top chefs on the planet. If that wasn't prize enough, the winning team will be whisked to one of my favorite restaurants in Sydney. They'll be going to Pilu at Freshwater for a spectacular lunch. And then after lunch, time in the kitchen with Giovanni Pilu. We'll give you a few tips of the trade that you'll be able to bring back to this kitchen. That restaurant is amazing. Ah, oh, just, uh, just hoping it's my team. The other side of the coin is less pleasant. For the losing team today, the whole team will face an elimination challenge, and one of that team will go home. We're hoping we're going to avoid having to don the black aprons today. It might come right down to the wire. So the red team, sitting in that tasting room and eating your food was a really, really good experience. The first course, those oysters were the perfect way to show Tetsuya and Guillaume how well 
this batch of MasterChef contestants can cook. The duck, beautifully executed. Tetsu himself raving about the way that dish works. Duck, perfect cooked and very, very, very tender. There were, however, a few negatives, a few bumps in the road. That cucumber coulis was a bit over sour and a little bit flannelly in terms of texture. I'm worried that because the judges didn't love my dish, um, it could potentially let the team down. And Shani, the graininess of that pistachio anglaise in the dessert threw off those immaculately poached peaches by Sky. Pistachio anglaise, it's too coarse. It should be like silk. Do you think this mistake has put the whole team at risk? It may have, and I was pretty disappointed with myself. I think if we, if we lost today, a lot of it would come down to my part. There's one other issue. You were charged with cooking a classic French menu. Putting up a smoked duck breast with a stir fry of pak choy is outside of, I think, most people's experience as a classic French I find that very not French. Goddamn Asian duck dish. I'm really worried that that's the make or break with the judging. Well, Blue Team, you got off to an absolutely ripper start. When Guillaume and Tetsuya cut in that lobster, they were blown away by how well that lobster was cooked. Magnifique. And for the three of us, it was the dish of the day. I was really pleased that the dish that I was involved with got such high accolade, and I'm happy that I'm actually now starting to serve food that I want to serve. And then to main course, this some. Um kind of modern version of duck à l'orange with a little fig compote, the segments of orange, that cassis hinted gravy that Claire made was an absolute ripper and just brought all those disparate elements together into a really fine dish. So a brilliant start and Tetsuya's two favourite dishes of the day. But then, from such highs, the desserts that were both flawed. The pre-dessert, your surprise dish, it was very sweet, and it was another egg yolk dish. Then came the creme brulee. It hadn't set, it was runny, it was a disaster. I do feel responsible for the creme brulee not setting, and should we go to elimination, I will feel responsible for putting the team in this position. It was a tough decision. What made it hard is because Red Team, you put up a menu that was consistently of a high standard with a few little niggles. But Blue Team, you put up a couple of dishes that were stellar in quality, exquisite. But then a couple that failed worse than anything else we saw. Daniel, do you think you won? Yep. Jonathan, if you go into another elimination challenge, how will you feel? I just don't want to take the team to an elimination challenge. <laughs> I've never been on a winning team. I'm desperate to win this one. I'm desperate for my team to win. It was incredibly close, and you should, both teams should be incredibly proud of the menus you put up. The trouble in this competition, when you've got two teams working at such a fine, high pitch, is that little bumps can throw you off the track and then throw you into an elimination challenge. The winners of the French Team Challenge are the blue team. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> the 
took a long time to sink in until I turned around and saw Callum running at me and jump onto me like with such excitement. I think it was that. Yeah, I was over the moon. <laughs> over the moon. I reckon Tony Bilson's having a few little quiet champagnes right now, maybe a bottle or so. You've done yourselves proud, you've done him proud, you've done us proud. What are you waiting for? Pilu is waiting for you. Go and enjoy yourselves. I feel absolutely gutted and I can feel that from everyone around me on the red team. Now it means that our whole team will be going into elimination. Red team, it's all down to you now. Not as a team, but as individuals. One of you is going home, and it could be you. Tomorrow night on MasterChef Australia... You'll all face a basic skills test. The red team go head-to-head -head in an elimination challenge. There's no more friends in this competition. It's just competitors. First up, it's a race to create the perfect pesto. This little green bowl could possibly send me home. Then, their culinary knowledge will be put to the test. Final round will be name this herb. Someone's staying and someone's going. This is it. There are no second chances. And for one of them, their dream will end. You are one mistake away from walking out that door for the last time.